Welcome to the Loyal Opposition Podcast. I'm Bernie Flowers, one of Uncle Sam's wayward children, and I believe that our country's best days are still in front of us. Our guest for this episode is Mr. Robert Cornicelli, National President of Veterans for America First. First. Hi, Robert. How are you doing? Great. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for appearing on our program. I appreciate you joining us, and I'd love for you to tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Can you tell us a little bit? So I'm, an, I'm a native New Yorker, recently relocated to South Carolina. I wanted to get bring my family, my nine-year-old son and my, my 13-year-old daughter up in a place where character means something. You know, that, that, that Southern culture of the sirs and ma'ams, you know, you want, it, it's such a great way to, to bring up children nowadays. You live in New York or California, they're telling kids in schools, there's no need to be respectful to an adult. So I, I came down here um, to give my kids a better life, give my family a better life. You know, I served four years active duty Navy, four years reserve. Uh, got out as a petty officer third class, went to night school for my associates, went to night school for my bachelor's. I was, nothing was going to stop me from getting to where I wanted to be. Um, I served on the board of education in, in my town. I was a commander of my American Legion. You know, I did all those things. I always was focused on my community. Um, but then, in you know, when Obama came in and I realized, you know, when we're not heading in that direction that he promised the unity and a better life for everyone, it was a better life for some, keeping more people like Roosevelt, uh, like FDR did, more people hooked on government services and making people feel like that's the way to go. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to go back in the service after 9-11. So um, I enlisted in the Army National Guard. Uh, I went in as a counterintelligence agent. My goal was to somehow get into an intelligence. But uh, my first sergeant at OCS had different plans for me, even though they had me in as a counterintelligence agent. I was the honor grad. So my little, I noticed. My, Pretty cool. Uh, what's that? Pretty cool. Yeah, um, I was the honor grad at OCS. He's like, you got to lead troopers in battle. You can't be an intelligence. You got to be an infantry officer. And I didn't care. You know, I want to do my part. Um, but during that, I served in the counter narcoterrorism task force for two and a half years, the counter drug program. I was in the domestic all hazard response team. I did a lot of those intel type uh, missions locally. Um, and then I deployed to Kuwait. There was only three missions left, two to Afghan, three to Afghanistan, one to Kuwait. The first one I went on to Afghanistan, they cut it. The second one I got put on, they cut it. So I was an aide de camp at that time to a two star general, General Wickstrom. He's like, I can't, if I put you on the third mission to Afghanistan and they cut that, you're not deploying at all because our unit wasn't deploying. So I went to Kuwait and it was, it was, it was fun, you know. Um, the area support group defending Kuwait was was fun, but I, my body just broke down when you're that old, you know, when you're trying to be infantry. So I ended up in the Wounded Warrior Program within the military, but instead of sitting around, I went to work for the DIA as I was going through my procedures, and I was there four years. I worked for General Flynn. Mm -hmm. I was executive officer to the director of operations, which means you have, you know, you have every clearance the director of operations has. And it was eye-opening what we're up against. Oh, yeah. So once you know that and you have heroes like General Flynn out there pointing out who the enemy really is, that there is a deep state, and he was saying it back in 2014, 2015, and he was being told to shut up and be, keep quiet. Um, there is a problem with radical Islam. Uh, we can't sit down and just say, America will withstand this. No, they won't. They will infiltrate us from inside. And you hear all this from these people, and you're like, I got to be part of this fight. Um, so when they medically retired me, we went back to New York, and I said, I got to get involved. So I tried to run for Congress, did pretty well against an incumbent, one of the one of the Republicans, one of the eight Republicans who voted for the January 6th committee. I almost beat him. But it's just lost, even in New York. The Republican Party is way to the left. So I relocated down here and I joined Veterans for America first 
because one of the most important things is getting America first candidates elected. And it's not America only, it's America first. See, that's what they don't talk about. They're not saying we're not going to help out other nations or people who are suffering. But if 34 million people are, are at, at the poverty level in this country, we don't need to be sending hundreds of billions to other countries. Take care of Americans first. There you so have. That's why I joined. And I got to tell you, one of the greatest honors I've had since being the president is bringing you on our national board because you are a man of, of character, honor, integrity. I've looked you up. I've read a lot about you. And you're right up there to me with Admiral Kubik. So I know we're going to do great things here with VFAF. Brother, you give me way too much credit. But if we stand together, we can get some stuff done. Yeah. So I'm just proud to work with you. But um, let me ask you, tell me why you support President Trump. You know, working for Flynn and hearing from a person of that character that there are forces outside the country that want to bring us down. There are no more democracies left, maybe Israel. Europe's lost. Um, you see what's going on in London where you make a post, you got to go, you go to jail, you rape a girl, you're an illegal alien, you rape a girl, you go out on, uh, you know, probation. Uh, democracy's lost in Europe. Um, we're holding on strong in Israel, I think, but they're going to take us down from inside. And President Trump, and you, sir, they tried to shoot him. That means he's making people nervous. That means he's making these powers, these major powers out there, um, nervous. And if if something like that happens, you know you're right. Yeah. So the man took a bullet for us. I'll stand with him to the end. I only wish I was one of those Secret Service agents. You know? More guys like us. Yeah. We need you for some other things, you know. He's going to change the world if he gets another four years. In a very positive way. Yeah. So let's talk more about this. Um, why is, is it so important to elect America First candidates, especially locally? It's a good question. Um, for so long, the Republican Party has been led by, um, I would say, people who claim to be moderate, care about the conservative movement, but really just get in there and start making a profit, start building up their own wealth, and really not coming up, coming through with their promises. Their platforms have always been what their county chair people have told them. They've never really said, I stand apart from this establishment organization. I'm going to fight for veterans. I'm going to fight for um, homeless Americans. Nothing gets done. We, even within our own party. But America first candidates, and you look at what's the name, Dan Crenshaw from Texas. The first thing he did is start going to World Economic Forum um, conventions overseas. Yeah. And you're supposed to be a special, uh, you know, I think he was SF, and you're supposed to be this, this hard knock guy who's going to fight back against the establishment, and you cave. No, you, you, we have to get people who swear by this policy of what we're going to take care of americans first we can no longer take care of people all over the world we're broke we are you don't manufacture anything here anymore everything's outsourced we don't produce our own fuel um so it, it's just such an easy slogan build up americans first and the world will prosper so it's it, it, it's vital we put these people in and this guy running in minnesota royce white oh, he's not man. a veteran but this man, what's that? Walls. No, no, Royce White is a candidate for Senate. It, yeah, look this guy up. We're going to do it. You and I are going to do a, a Zoom in, um, an endorsement of him. He's the real deal. All right. I like that. And I like the sound of that. I'm fighting the establishment. You know they're going to. So we need more Royce Whites. We need more Corey Mills. We need more Playsix. We need more uh, Anna Luna Paul. You know, the, the people who are like, I don't care what the party tells me. I'm fighting for America. There you go. I I totally get what you're saying, and I'm with you all the way. And another thing, you know, you guys made me officially a part 
of Veterans for America First. I'm so thrilled because the bottom line is I was doing the same things anyway that you're asking me to do. So nothing really changes. You just gave me a title. So I'm thankful for that. But the bottom line here is the floor is now yours. Tell the people whatever you'd like to say. We can't be afraid anymore. We can't sit back on our jet skis and our camping trips and our, uh, you know, uh, sitting at the beach and thinking it's the same way it was 20, 30 years ago and everything's going to work itself out. They have been infiltrating our government, our institutions for 30, 40 years. And they have a stranglehold on us. And we have to fight back. Your kids are not safe in schools anymore. You know, I always say, I, I think the globalists look at America and say, men, it's not about sexism. Men have been defending this world for a very long time. And American men have gone to war all over the world. There's never been a war here, really, other than the, Amer the revolution. But we've gone to World War One, World War Two. We've gone to Korea. We've gone to um, Vietnam. We've gone to Grenada, Bosnia. I mean, we send men into battle for th for hundreds of years to push democracy. So, how do you beat us if you want to create a borderless society? You have to weaken men. Yes, women can do many of the things men can do. Many, some better than men. But when you're talking about fighting, we were put here by God to fight and defend men. So how do you how do you beat that if you're an enemy overseas? You weaken men in the America in America. How do you do that? Push trans, push trans, push trans. You could change your gender. Weaken men. Make them more effeminate. And if you can weaken men in this country, you could take it over. There'll be no one left to fight. There you go. So that's what we have to stop. Is this is this insanity that you could change your gender, you could change it, you know, who, your chromosomes determine who you are. I mean, we really have to fight a, a world battle for sanity, for morality, for faith. You know, we're there's no faith anymore. There's no more talk about God. So I'm in this fight to the end, and that's and I know you are too. Uh, we just can't let these globalists win. Can't let these evil people destroy this great country. There you go. I feel exactly the same way. So with that said, how can people reach you if they need to? So we are Veterans for America First, Veterans for Trump. You can go to our website, vfaf.us. Sign up, join. If you're really out there to push America first, ask to be a president of a state. Ask to be a vice president of a state. Become part of the local push to get people elected, get people out to vote, register people, and watch for the steal. Because that's the only way Trump's going to lose this year. There's going to be a massive steal, and, and we need more soldiers on the ground. You know, I was just talking to somebody about that. Trump is in a really good place as far as the election is concerned, but the deep state owns all the media. And the only possible way that he could lose is, like you said, some funny business. And we've got to get, we got to win big so that we can make sure there's no opportunity for funny business. Because if it is close, I don't think things will go well for us. So we got to make sure we win big. So with that said, I look forward to working with you closely and building up veterans for america first and getting some candidates in place and uh, like you, you know i ran for congress wasn't successful but that doesn't mean we can't fight the good fight together and get some other people in office so robert i salute you and i thank you for coming on to the program brother the pleasure was all mine and i definitely look forward to working with you and hopefully one day putting you in in the u.s senate or in congress oh we'll see about that but you'll get there first <laughs> we'll see all i right, have young brother. kids all right. You take care of yourself. You too, sir. Thank you. Well, that's about it for now. This has been the Loyal Opposition Podcast, produced in association with Paul Back Productions and other podcasters. I ask that you like, share, and subscribe. Be sure to get your copy of my book, Black Values Map, available as an ebook on Amazon, Audible, and Apple Books. And also, it's okay to disagree, but if we want our country to prosper, we must insist on unity. 
transparency and civility from ourselves and our fellow citizens. Thanks for listening to the Loyal Opposition Podcast. See you next week.